During your lovely journey through Ferelden and Orlay, you probably stumbled across two or ten giant flying lizards that could gobble up an entire army if they wanted. You know, dragons. And if you're anything like me, you saw one of those beautiful creatures of pure power and ferocity and thought, I want to kill that. But as you can imagine, these scaly beasts are pretty damn hard to take down. Hard, but not impossible. I will show you how to defeat these behemoths so you can become a true dragon slayer. Let's start with the first dragon, the Ferelden Frostback, which is found in the Hinterlands. You probably saw her when you accidentally went through Lady Shana's Valley when trying to get to Redcliffe's castle. I recommend being at least level 12 and having a sword and board warrior, two mages, and a ranged rogue. For the video, I was a shield-wielding warrior and I brought Varric, Solus, and Vivienne. Keep in mind that the Ferelden Frostback has high fire resistance, immunity to disabling effects, and slows. However, she's vulnerable to cold damage. So, just like in Pokemon, make sure you bring your ice attacks. And, of course, I forgot to switch staves for Solus, which probably would have made this fight a lot easier, but I digress. Do as I say, and not as I do, I guess. Equipping fire-resistant armor and accessories will help you survive longer, and equipping everyone with a healing mist grenade will save you in a pinch. So, once you get to the Blood Cliffs, you will see the dragon land and it's time to begin the fight. Now, one of the toughest parts about fighting a dragon is that they can potentially attack you on all sides. Her breath, front legs, back legs, tail, and even her wings can do devastating damage to your whole party. The best way to position your team is to treat it like a dragon from World of Warcraft. And yes, I am being serious. Remember on Nixium? Have your tank face to face with the gigantic worm and have everyone else on the sides near the stomach. This way your team avoids breath and claw attacks. Keep in mind that her claw attacks can be blocked and are highly telegraphed, so be sure to block with your shield and not your face. The Frostback will flap her wings to create some sort of a vortex that will suck your entire party and do big chunks of damage. This is kind of unavoidable, so roll, leap, or frost step your way out of it. Keep the Frostback occupied with your tank and have everyone else focused on one leg. Eventually, the wounded leg will make her collapse, which gives you a chance for some free pot shots. The dragon will eventually get tired of your shit and take flight to start bombarding you with fire. Just keep rolling. At certain times, she will perch on a cliff to avoid your attacks, which would be smart if you weren't rolling with three ranged party members. So return to the onslaught. In the next phase of this fight, she will summon a myriad of dragonlings to terrorize you. Burn the dragonlings down fast before they overwhelm you and continue your assault. When she's down to very low health, she will fly to a different cliff to start her last stand. Climb on up and finish the job. She drops pretty good gear and some great crafting materials. So keep in mind, block her attacks, don't let your squishy characters get squashed, and manage your potions carefully. Replacing a mage with a two-handed warrior can help you handle the dragonlings, but you'll have to constantly keep watch of their position. This is a hard and long fight, but if you follow this advice, you'll be one step closer in destroying all of the high dragons in Thetis. For more Dragon Age Inquisition content and for all your video game needs, be sure to head over to shacknews.com.